Hi everyone. We'll begin this morning with the Gospel reading before the sermon. The Gospel is according to St. Mark. Let us be attentive. The Lord said, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospel's will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? For what can a man give in return for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed. And when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels, and he said to them, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. This morning, the theme is the Holy Cross. We have the Feast of the Holy Cross in September. We have Holy Friday, of course, where we remember the crucifixion of Christ. So why another day for the Holy Cross? Well, it's now the third Sunday in Lent. This means we're at the halfway point. And this is to remind us that we are on this Lenten journey, and in our life we're on a journey. And you'll see in the icon that I'm sending you that it is not the Holy Cross that we see on September 14th, but it's an icon of Christ walking up to be crucified with Simon helping him hold the cross. And the cross for us as Orthodox Christians is not an awful symbol. It's not a symbol of violence, which it was in the time of Christ. But the cross is a sign of victory. It's a sign of hope. So again, why do we sell? Why do we commemorate this on the third Sunday in Lent? Well, as we're making our, our journey through Lent, and this is the halfway point, as I mentioned, we remember that life is full of struggles. Lent has been full of struggles. I don't just mean fasting or services, because everything's been disrupted this Lent. We have this, this virus that's affecting the entire world. We can say that at this point in time, this is everybody's cross, or at least part of our cross. It's affected us in all different ways. Perhaps we're working at home. Maybe some of you are, are figuring out how to do school at home. Maybe you're sad because you're not with your classmates or you're not seeing family. Maybe it's hard to get along with your siblings at home and it's a lot more time than you're usually spending together. This whole period has, with the virus has maybe added to our daily cross. Now, what does it mean, though, to pick up our cross? Surely it's not a physical cross like Jesus had to actually carry, but our cross could be dealing with these difficulties, these daily struggles. It doesn't need to be something enormous in our lives. We have little crosses, even losing our patience, or maybe dealing with people that are difficult, maybe us being difficult for other people. We remember that in this, in this day, our Lord is with us when we have these struggles. We're not alone. And we're reminded in the Gospel with Jesus' words that whoever wishes to save their life for my sake and the gospel by losing everything else that they have, and this isn't getting rid of things that we love, but getting rid of things that are distractions, getting rid of some of these struggles that maybe we don't need to deal with, maybe people that are, are difficult for us to deal with, maybe things that are difficult for us Maybe we don't need all of these things in our lives. And this period with being at home and being away from school and your parents away from work and things being canceled left and right, we have an opportunity to see what we need in our lives and what we don't. And we have an opportunity to pick up our cross in the way that we are connecting ourselves closer to Christ. 
it doesn't mean we need to appreciate our struggles because sometimes our struggles are really hard. But it does mean that we can grow closer to Christ so that when we have struggles and when we don't, we know that he is there and that he's with us. And I pray that for however long this lasts and far after this time where we're all separated, that you know that Jesus loves you and that he is with you. He is with you today, tomorrow, and the next. And he gives us this gift, the gift of knowing that we have our Lord with us through these struggles. And these last few weeks of Lent, leading up to Holy Week and Pascha, let us remember that he is with us on this journey. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. Amen. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye-bye.